There we go. Have we, has everyone got the hello slide? Yes. Brilliant. Okay. Yep. I'll, I'll take your whatever that was. I'll take your voice as the authoritative statement. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I want to say hello. My name is James West, um, and I'm a Creative Industries Business Advisor. Um, this webinar is being hosted by uh, Creative United, and I've worked with them for about two and a half years, uh, coaching a variety of creative and cultural businesses all over the country, all different sizes. In this session, I've tailored it for that kind of broad phrase of creative, but that definitely includes cultural organisations. And notice on the on the list, we've got people, but some people run theatres, some people run orchestras. Um, we've got um, some some designers, fashion based interiors, so we've got quite a, a breadth of people. So if I do say creative, I, I mean creative and cultural, and if I say cultural, I mean creative as well. Um, in this session, I, I don't want to get too technical, we've only got an hour, we've got a lunch time together, um, so I want to cover uh, unique selling points from the perspective of the what and the why, how you do it, and when you've done it, what do you do next. So that's about as technical as I'm going to be getting. Um, I wanted to tell you about language. When I work with business, creative businesses, um, I don't try and change the language of business advice. Um, so when I say a business, that could be for you an organization, it could be a charity, it could be a collective, it could be you as a sole trader, it doesn't really matter. Um, but the word business represents who you are. I'll also be talking about sales. Um, so you might have a product that's free, it might be funded by the, by the government or by a funder, um, or it might be an element you give away and it about, it'd be about participation, but still you're trying to sell it, you've still got to try and persuade people to come and consume it. So even if there's not a cash time transaction, I think the phrase sales is really important. And then finally, um, competitors. So when often I work with arts organisations or those that are a bit charitable, um, they sometimes shriek at the word competitor. Um, it doesn't mean you're greedy and you're going to put people out of business. What it means is that um, there, there are other organisations of how you're going to compete in the, in the minds of customers to, to, to stand out. Um, so a, a word that some art organisations use is comparators, so how you compare to other organisations, but um, I think competitor um, has the right dynamic. Um, People. people arriving, which is great. Just, just be aware of the noise behind you. Um, and the, the, the last thing I want to mention before we get going is um, we will have some polls. I want to make this interactive. Um, and you can speak if you've got a microphone, or you can um, type in a question or a comment, and I can read them out. Um, but we're going to do some polls, get your, your feedback on some things. And we've got an activity, but for that, all you require is a pen and paper. So, um, again, I promise you I'm not going to be too technical. So, let's kick things off with the first poll. Um, I think I, I, need, I need a musical soundtrack for this. Um, what I want to know is how confident you are about creating a unique selling proposition, or USP. So, I'll show you the poll in a second, but five answers are, one, you've got no idea, two, you've heard of them, you've heard of a USP, you understand the theory, Four is you can do them, but they're a bit average. And five, you've totally got it nailed, and you're now thinking, why am I in the seminar? <laughs> um, so let's let's find the button for the to launch my first poll. Okay, polls. There we go. Right, launch. There we go. So it should be coming live to so your screens any minute now. Hundred percent voted. There we go. That was that was speedy. Okay, right. So, and the results are. Can you see the results, or is it just me? I don't know. Um, so the majority of people understand the theory. Um, some people have written some before, but they're not. You know, they're a bit average. And two people, or some people, um, know the headlines. 
but um, but not the great, but needs some more information. So that's fine. So that gives me a sense that we're sort of somewhere in the middle. Um, right. I want to cover the what and the why. And I, as we go through this webinar, I put in a few quotes because I think that sometimes people say it better than me, so we might as well just use their words. This is a this is a by a digital marketing strategist who's, who's quite high profile. When you start with what's at stake for the buyer, you earn the right to their attention. And USPs are all about a customer-facing uh, uh, perspective, and it's all about how do you get the right to their attention. So, what is a USP? Now, there's lots of theories on, on there's lots of different ways of quantifying it. I just wanted to give you a quick sample so you have a perspective. Oh, you've lost my visual. Nice. <laughs> Uh, maybe I've got to close the poll. Is that? Wait. Is that solved? All oh, right, great. Sorry. So, what did you miss? You just missed. Well, you missed that last slide. Okay, fine. There we go. I'm learning as I go. Okay, right. I've got to what is a USP? So, did people hear what I was saying a minute ago? They just didn't see it. Okay, we're going to do great. Um, okay, so. So what is a USP? So this is a this is a statement that comes from the Chartered Institute of Marketing, who I have, who I have a qualification with. One of the business basics that stood the test of time. Um, what else? That is the foundation of your marketing strategy. So I would agree with, and I'd probably go much further than that. Um, it helps customers save time when choosing to buy a service or product from you. It's the reason that one product or service is different from another and better than that of the competition. But really, with all of these great things, the simplest one I think fits is it's the reason why someone buys a product or services over your your blah 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 blah. The reason why someone buys your product or service over someone else's. So as we go through it, be thinking about that. Why bother with the USB? So I think you're probably all fairly confident on this, but People sometimes say it's about standing out in the market, it's about differentiation. And whilst that's true, I think it's even more fundamental than that. It's about increasing in, increasing interest and converting leads. It's just getting into it once more. Yeah. All right. Is someone joining us? Yeah. 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 Um, so it makes sense of what you. Okay. I don't know. How do you? There are any ideas of how to quiet? Find noise down. Is it? How much is it? You've got a bit of a noisy background. Can I ask you to maybe put your headphones on? Um, I mean, I think somebody was, sounds like they've joined us from the kitchen. So could you just <laughs> maybe mute your mute your audio? That's lovely. I think that sounds better. There we go. Um, okay, so going back to why bother? It increases sales. Oh, All right, maybe I can mute your attendance. There we go. Some, someone's just been there. One second, bear with me, and I'll just. I can sort of snap that. I've got There we go. There we go. We should, you should just have my dulcet tones now. I um, hope that's better. Okay, why bother? Because it drives sales, increases interest, and converts leads into sales. And it makes sense of what you do. And I think, bold claim, but it's the foundation of everything. We'll come to why I think that in a second. Um, so, I said I wanted this to be a little bit interactive. Now, now you've all got a sense of what USPs are. What I want to do is a quick activity. I've, I've had a look and seen who's in the room. The room. Um, but what I'd like to do is just give you a chance 
to put pen on paper and come up with a USP for your business as a whole. Um, now, this is just a quick task. Um, I want it to be short, snappy summary of why you think your business is unique. And if you feel happy to share them, you can send me your messages and I will read some of them out to other people. Okay, so I said five minutes, but let's, so let's run from now and see what happens. So there's no right or wrong. This isn't about getting it perfect. This is simply about getting something as a starting block. The lovely thing about a webinar is that other people don't know who you are, so um, you can share you can share a your USB without fear of someone looking over the room and laughing at you. Okay, so we've got one for Margarita. I have a point of view, if it makes sense. Catchy. Do you have anyone else who wants to share an exercise? Share a USB that they've done. Okay, so we've got Creative United have come in. For us, we're leading the way in providing business support for creative and cultural organizations. And a smiley face, I don't know if that counts. We've got maker of handmade, high quality, and locally produced Scandinavian. Functional wear. Nice. Okay, I've got time for a couple of others before we move on. James. Um, so, Tim, we've got taking classical music outside the concert hall with digital experiences. Okay. We've got production company which specializes in telling intelligent genre stories across film, TV, media, and interactive. And bespoke title. Oh, sorry, I keep bouncing. Bespoke targeted support of artists created by artists, arts leaders, created by people who know the deal. And we build video technologies that save costs and increase audience engagement. Okay, that's great. If you've got any more, do send them through, and people can read them as we go. Um, but that that's certainly useful, and it's a good exercise to always start with putting something down. I find with USPs, when you hear about the theory, you, you build up a lovely picture in your head, but until you actually have a go at writing something down, um, you don't get a sense of the challenge. Um, so now what I'm going to do is take you through a few more things that I think will help get those USPs stronger and bolder as ideas. So what makes a good, uh, what makes, what does a good USP look like? Well, I think simply it's to answer the question of why I should choose you over a competitor. But I know you probably want a bit more detail than that. So it always needs to be customer facing. So don't write a USP from your perspective or in, as if you're talking to a colleague or a professional, unless professionals are the customers. Um, so if your if your customers are like you've got a venue and you want to sell them uh, general public to come, that's who your USP needs to focusing on, and that's the answer it must be providing. 
the language needs to be relevant to your audience. Um, so if, if you are selling to businesses, some business jargon is okay, but try and keep it plain English. Um, length, people often ask me about length for the USP. Um, it, the truth is it's whatever suits you and whatever works best for you, and we can look at that as we go through the session. But um, it, it, I would aim to start with a sentence, um, and if you need it to be, it can be a paragraph. Um, we'll come back to a second where, where USPs aren't slogans. So it's, it's an internal starting point. And how many USPs should you have? And again, there's debate about whether you should have one or one for every product grouping. What I would generally advise is that you look at one from your business, um, but as you go through the process, build up more if you need to. And in doing that, you'll get to a place where you understand um, what fits. Okay. So, what a USP is not, and I find sometimes a not is easier than the what when we're doing stuff. So a USP is not your vision or mission statement. Um, it is not your slogan. So it's a, it's a tool from a marketing planning perspective. It's not, whatever you write in this process is not what you necessarily want to say in your elevator pitch. Um, it's not about being the best. Um, you know, you might be a leader in your field, but that's not a enough alone to be a USP. Price is important, and it will either be cheaper or more expensive than the competition, but, um, but price alone is not a USP. It's not about competing, so understanding your competitors and being different to them is not the same as just being bigger, bolder, brasher. And as I said before, it's not inward looking. It's got to be focused on solutions for your customers. Okay. So what makes a good USP? So again, you all understand, most of you understand the theory, so this should fit. So I've got six things. It should be unique, something you know, particular to you. It should be desirable. It has to fit the need of the customer. And they have to want it. It has to be concise, so concise isn't the same as being short. So if you need to explain it over a paragraph, then do. But whatever you do, don't repeat it. Don't be over emotive and over passionate to the point where you're exhausted by the time you've got to the end of it. It needs to be clear and specific, so pin it down. And what's quite nice is the examples we've had earlier. Some people were quantifying where their product came from, who their audience, you know, were, how it was delivered, um, outside of the art centre, you know, these sort of things are a, a good building block to start with. Um, it needs to be memorable, and I don't mean memorable, again, in a slogan sense, I mean, what people often say at these points is it needs to have the X factor, but for obvious reasons I decided not to include that, um, or wow factor, but memorable I think is fine. Uh, it needs to also be credible. If you are the world leader, then you've got to be able to believe that when someone says it. You're, you have to be able to, your customer has to get trust from what you're saying. And, and another way that I found quite handy when explaining what a good one looks like is it solves a problem, or rather a bite of the problem. So um, takeaway coffee um, solves a problem about enjoying coffee on the go. Um, but if you were to set up a coffee shop, you would never try and solve that problem. You'd try and set yourself a niche within it. So always, when you have a look at headlines, jump down and have a look at the problem in a bit more detail. Good so far? Now I want to look at what makes a bad USP. Again, I said, like I said, I think not is sometimes easier than what. So, we've got one here. We're the one-stop shop for all creatives in Birmingham. Well, this is why I think it's rubbish. It's not unique. Um, it, um, it's not desirable. I don't really know what a one-stop shop is. It's one of my bugbears. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm not really sure what creatives are. Um, I mean, I, I might put myself in the creative field, but it's quite subjective, so it's not specific. 
there's no real wow factor. It doesn't tell me why I want to interact with the one-stop shop. And, um, and it doesn't really offer anything around credibility. However, it is concise, so I'll give it that. Okay, how about this? Our vision is to change the way dance is perceived amongst men in the UK. All right, so that's get, getting better. It's concise and it's specific. So it's talking about um, a genre. It talks about an audience, men, and a territory is in the UK. But I think the big problem here is that it's a vision. So it's a back to the visioning statement, not necessarily a USP. And, and it's not credible. I don't know why I trust these people to be the ones changing perception. And I don't really know what the impact of will be once the perceptions happened. So it's just too broad, too much. In order to answer this, they need to take that bite of the, of the problem and define what it is for them. Okay. A welcoming family experience. Ugh. So, <laughs> welcoming family experience scores nothing in my book. Um, and actually, it's a line I often hear. Charitable organisations, um, art centres, um, pubs, whatever, use. It's not unique. It's not, it doesn't tell me why I want to experience a welcoming environment. Um, it's, not, it's not concise, it's too short. If there's not enough detail to even make sense. It's not specific, family maybe. There's no wow factor and it's not credible. So don't, don't get caught in a trap of thinking you've got to be writing a slogan. Because sometimes you do that and you end up with stuff like this. What we got here? Okay, so inspiring jewelry. I can't see because this thing's away. So you probably will read that. I can't see it properly. Um, and again, this is concise and it's specific, but it doesn't have some of the elements we talked about. But my all-time favourite is indeed this beast. Diverse disruption architects innovating urban environment with emerging talent that transforms lives. Now I'm slightly delighted that in the one the examples you gave me earlier you didn't have any of this waffle. But you'd be amazed how often in creative organisations this is where it ends up going. Because you get so you become wordsmiths and you get so wrapped up in the bubble of whether how it reflects you as a mirror, you forget what it looks like as an audience outside. So I want to do another poll. Let's see if I can make this work. And this time I want you to, to, to have a, a decision based on what you think are some of the most overused uh, words when it comes to USPs by creative organizations. Okay, so let's find this poll. Okay. Oh, almost there. Some people pondering. There we go, 100%. Okay. So innovative at <laughs> 75%, and uh, creative at 25%. Um, okay, well, that makes a lot of sense. I quite agree. Um, I mean, I personally think they're all overused in the arts um, and the creative sector, and very few of them fit. Um, where are we on time? Okay. So I wanted to did I did want to talk about good USP before we get on to the how. Um, and sorry, and Sarah, who organised this, asked me to come up with some examples. The problem I find with with organisations, as I said, it's not about slogans. So you need to know the organisations in order to understand the USPs. And actually, a lot of creative businesses and cultural businesses haven't worked on USPs. So you're already ahead of the game because you're listening to me talk about it. But I do want to give some couple of examples that aren't creative necessarily. This is one: all the features of a professional camera without the fuss. And this is a good example of something that fits about demand, desire benefit and some memorability. So it's Olympus um, and they created a camera that was 
uh, nowhere near as expensive as professional cameras, and they felt it had all of the elements that would allow you to create high quality professional pictures, um, although without the ability to tailor it. One classic one when we all talk about USPs that we, everybody brings up is uh, M&Ms. Melts in your mouth, not in your hands. A very memorable one. And it's about, you know, if you think about, if, you, if you've got to create a product, and you, maybe you're a jewelry manufacturer, maybe you, um, uh, maybe you represent theatre, you can argue that you, you feel like your product's a bit generic. Lots of people are doing it. Um, and the same way with, with chocolates, you know, that actually how do you differentiate chocolate? But this is a, a good example of how M&M's tackled it. I did want to just quickly talk about sweet shop experience. And now this is indeed an artist example, um, not one of my epidemics. This is a client we work with, a fringe theatre in Edinburgh. Um, and they wanted us to do some research because they felt their one message that they really wanted to shout about was their charitable status, that they weren't just about taking lots of money. Um, and they so I got thrown by the screen. Um, we did we did some research with them and worked around their USP. And one of the things we found out that customers really valued about their organisation was that um, when you go to their courtyard, so if you know Edinburgh, you might know who they are now. Um, you could see a whole variety of shows um, in one place um, that, that were of a certain quality. And the work we did them with them identified them as more of a sort of sweet shop experience in that you have all the excitement of going to a sweet shop um, with the variety you can taste and you kind of know that you may not like the taste but whatever you get from it um, is going to be memorable. Anyway, that was them. Let's jump on to how. So how are we doing? So maybe, I don't know if you can give me any praise if you've got any, any love through the comments would be nice. Um, or go faster or slower, that would be handy. It's quite weird. This is the thing about a webinar. I'm used to doing group sessions where I can see you and see if you're nodding off or you're, you're smiling and laughing. Anyway, we'll push on. So how do you create a um, USP? So you've got the theory, you've got the sense. Um, well, this is a quote. Do not tell me how good you make it. Tell me how good it makes me when I use it. So that thing about benefit. So the first thing you need to do um, when you look at USPs is to define your customers. So who wants the problem you're solving? Sounds simple in theory, but people get a lot quite stuck at this point. Um, where are they located is one way to look at it. You know, if you are and easy with USP to get stuck in that grandeur of the statement. We are transforming the way that the arts are seen and blah. We are leading the way in product design. Um, but actually if you only sell to people in London, you're not leading the way. You're, um, you're a London-based solution. Um, other ways to slice customers, I'm not going to go into this too much. So demographics, age, um, uh, gender, Etc. Psychographics, their beliefs, their ethics, uh, so their profiles in the broader sense. Behavioural traits: Do they are they bargain buyers? Do they are they very selective? Are they premium buyers? So these are just just some thoughts because this is this isn't totally on topic. But when you but when you look at USPs, you do need to define your customers. And if we have time, yes, I am. Um, I wanted to tell you a little story. It's a little little story time moment. Um, the, the, the most, the biggest golden rule I think when it comes to um, anything to do with customers is that you cannot appeal to everybody. Here's a little story, it's the donkey story, You've probably heard it before. An old man, a boy and a donkey were going to town. The boy rode on a donkey and the old man walked. As they went along they passed some people who re remarked it was a shame the old man was walking and the boy was riding. The man and the boy thought maybe the critics were right, so they changed positions. Later, they passed some people that remarked, Oh, what a shame, he makes a little boy walk. Hmm. 
Then they decided they'd both walk. Soon they passed by some people, and they thought they were stupid to walk when they had a donkey to ride. So they both rode the donkey. Now they passed some people that, that shamed them for saying that they were awful but for putting such a big weight on one poor little donkey. So the boy and the man said they were probably right, so they decided to carry the donkey. As they crossed the bridge, they lost their grip and the animal fell into the river and drowned. The moral of the story? In marketing, if you try to please everyone, you might as well kiss your ass goodbye. Sorry, awful pun, I know. But there we go. The principle of it is, when if anybody ever says to you again, we want to reach everyone, the noise isn't uh-uh, it's A-R, A-R. There we go. That's my bit of stardom done. Okay, so here we are. Product. So you've got your customers, you've got some, some audiences, um, and you, you segmented them out. And uh, now we need to look at product, feature, and benefits. And now I know you're probably thinking, when on earth are we going to get to how we write a USP? But we are going to get there, don't you worry. Um, so for, the, for, the, for this part of the process, what, what, a, what you need to look at is a product. So now product or service, you know, put them in the same phrase. Um, it's, I wouldn't advise doing USPs every single element of your business. But at the same time, if you want to break your business down into chunks, that's okay. For the purpose of, the, of, the, of, of USP generation, do break them down into sizable chunks. So that can either be your most profitable products or services. It could be the ones that are most important to you. Um, it could be a package of products and services. So if you are a venue and you offer classes, you might put all the classes and participatory elements into one. If you, um, so as an example, or you might, if you're a, a manufacturer, choose your leading um, cash cow product to run with. Um, then for your products, you've got a whole load of features. Um, so that what your, your product or service does, and these are kind of key elements to break down. Um, so there's a whole variety of things that th this could come under from price convenience, from the service experience, from speed, guarantee, originality, quality. But this, this, just a sense of um, features that you can cover. But the most important thing when we talk about USP is, is benefits. So you've got your product, you've got your feature, and benefits. And benefits are what are solving the, the needs of the customer, what benefit it is to me. Thinking back to that quote, not how you make it, but what it does for me. And this is an easy way to give you a benefit. You take a feature, you add which means that, and it equals the benefit. Easy. Uh, if I could hear you laugh, you probably are. Um, it's not as easy as that. It is difficult, but it really is worth pushing beyond features into benefits. I'll give you some examples. Um, Okay, what we're actually going to do now, this is the moment when you all need your piece of paper, right? So, um, so scrabble around, get your piece of paper. Um, and what I want you to do, this is this is, this is high-level artistic moment. I want you to draw four columns on your piece of paper. Okay, so we should get in there. And then I want you to, now we're rushing through this to a certain level because it's a long time seminar, but I want you to choose one product or service, or, or your whole products all together if that's easy enough, or a slice, whichever you prefer. And I want you to write that at the top. Um, and we're going to, for the first part of the exercise, add some features. Okay, so now I do need to credit Charter Institute of Marketing. The way this lady out has always been very useful to me, and I've always used it with other people. So thank you. I'm just using that here. Um, and I, this is an example they provided, which is very useful. So we've got an industrial machine as the product, and this is some examples 
of what the features might be. So the features of the machine is that it's reliable, it's got its operating speed, and it's ease of use. Okay, so now you go and have a quick go at doing all of this, um, writing out a handful, three, four, five features, and it'll come back and have a look at the next bit. Is that okay with everyone? All right, we've got some features. So there's something up on here about seeing hands up, but I don't know really know where hands up are. Have we, have we got some features? People just give us a little yes in the comment box. Lovely, okay. I think we move on. So let's So now you've got some features. Um, the next thing I want you to do is some benefits. So that so that comes back to that point about which means that. So industrial machine is reliable. The benefit to the customer is that the machine is available for more hours of the day. Now there might be many different benefits, but just, just choose one for this exercise. It operates fast, and what's interesting about that is it produces 10% more widgets than any other machine, and its ease of use requires minimal training for the customer. So take your take your features, think which means that, and write some benefits. A little bit trickier, but don't worry, you're not going to have to show this, it's just for your your thinking. And if anyone's brave enough, they can show me a feature and a and a benefit if they want to share. But if not, don't worry. Okay, so the next the next level, I think we're ready to move on. So once you've got your features and you've got some benefits, um, there are two other elements, and this is about the analytics. Oh, here we go, great, that's fine, thank you for sharing. So you've got functional, and the benefit is it enhances the eating experience. Okay, yeah, very nice, I can see that. So I think you need to go a bit further, maybe quantifying what the enhances is, make, does it I don't know who it's for, but that's it's a useful starting point. I'm intrigued to know what the product is, isn't it? It does click that moment of excitement in you. Okay, so what, once you've got um, your your features and your benefits, um, what I'd like to do is then score these to how important they are to you. Now you might find that because we've just done this now that you they're all really important because we've only looked at a couple. But I think you'll find when you do this on the longest thing or you do it if you do it in a larger organization, you'll find that some, and my Sarah's just sent through webinars 
in the, that they're accessible and people can take, participate anywhere. Absolutely. The point is, you don't you can wear whatever you like. That's the best thing, I think. But uh, I, I have actually got dressed into proper clothes. Um. So scoring. So you score based on the importance you think to you and the organisation. So in this context, the organisation scores ten around uh, the operating speed. But actually, in terms of reliability, they're not that bothered um, because um, it doesn't really make any difference. And if it's not so reliable, they can come and replace it. But the ease of training, ease of use is quite important because they, um, they don't spend all the time on the customer helpline. So scoring the product in terms of how important to you is a useful way to sort of prioritize. But it's, don't worry if it doesn't totally fit. Sometimes it's better for organizations. But the second part of it that's, that really is important is that now think about your competitors or organizations that, that want to reach the same audience that you want to solve problems for. And identify whether your features benefits are standard or distinctive. Do, do they, uh, so reliability, you know what every manufacturer suggests that theirs is reliable. Whether it's true or not, it's, it's a benefit that people communicate. Whereas the advantage in speed is definitely distinctive. Let me see what else is coming through here. Sunday matinees, convenient time of the day, B, get home easily afterwards. That's a lovely benefit to him, right? But really, and I think that actually recognizes your knowledge of your audience. So um, I can imagine that being a definite need, fitting desirability. Okay, so some S and some Ds and some scores. Well, I'm mindful of time, so I'm going to skip on. The point that this is trying to illustrate is that when you do this, you'll find that from your list, you, you should, you might have some desirables and distinct areas that really stand out. And these, this process of taking all of your products and interrogating them it is the foundations that I would go about when it comes to creating a USP. So I'm not suggesting that any of these statements that you've done in this, this little box are being that's your USB, off you go, run with it. But it is the building blocks to help you get your brain thinking about what it needs. And as I said before, USPs can be any length. They can, you can have as many or as little as your organization you require. Um, but the key thing is that it's focused on the customer and their desire and these benefits. Now, some of you might be going, oh, no, I didn't find all of mine were R's. You know, all of mine were, that's not R's, all of mine were um, standard S's. You know, people said before at the start that lots of people have done stuff around USBs but haven't been able to make them really sing. So it's okay if they are, but you've got to work on it. So what, there are always gaps. And when you're looking at USPs, it doesn't have to always be in the present. Um, I'm not saying it needs to be aspirational, completely out there, but it does. But there are looking forward, there are ways to develop USPs that could fit. So listen to your customers. Um, are busy mums telling you that they can't get into your space um, because it's inconvenient? And is there something you can develop about around a product that could communicate with them better? Um, Watch your competition. What are other people doing? Um, that thing about you know presenting live theatre uh, through cinemas is, is is really starting to grow and monopolise. And though uh, those early adopters probably got some competitive advantage. Um, keep up with legislation. You know sustainability, um, pollution. If there's anything that comes up around that, you might have an innovation where your USP could develop and grow more. Or around policy, especially those that work in maybe arts education. If something is on the curriculum or off it, and that might that might help shape your USP. Um, so we were we were going to have a quick go at redoing your USP, or well, maybe we should. So if there, but anyway, just two minutes, and um, if from the process we've very quickly done something that would probably take you a whole afternoon, um, but if anyone wants to rephrase their USP from earlier. 
with some of the things we've had, that would be handy. Nearly at the end, so that's good. I'm, I'm on time. So if all else fails, Sarah's going to send me her USB, I know, because uh, she's, uh, she's going to do me along. So this time, and I think every time you go back to the USP, throw out the rule book, throw, throw, turn your piece of paper over and just start it afresh. Never try and tinker. And that's why I always use a piece of paper and a pen um, when I do writing in this way. I think if you find yourself in a computer, you, there's a tendency to over overplay, um, a copy and paste, and just rejig words. Actually, just start again. So, do we have anybody with a quick creative brain? So don't mind if it's not a full USP, but anyone got a line they want to share? It's very specific, it's credible, it's got a clear reason for an audience. Okay, here we go. Start. Thank you. Handmade, high quality, and locally produced tableware with a Scandinavian influence that will make you your home beautiful and enhance your eating experience. That is absolutely brilliant. I remember that from the start, where, how you changed. So you brought you brought it to life. I can see as a reader why I want my home to be more beautiful, and I'm seeing how you're delivering that. The Scandinavian influence gives it some credibility and roots it. So I think that is a brilliant example, and I'm pleased that you um your <laughs> brain run so fast that you've managed to achieve that. Um, okay. All right. So that's great. So if any more come through, oh, there we go. Oh, now we've got floods now. Floods. All right, let's read them quickly. It's too good. Um, bespoke, free, and expert advice. Support for local artists, but delivered by arts leaders. So, Laura, that's great. Um, I find a different way to show the value of free. Um, so, cause it, you know, it's free in terms of money, but it's not necessarily free in terms of their time. So using free in a, in a USP is a bit subjective. So that's a thought to take away. But I think the local artist is key, so it, that sense of familiarity um, is great. Creative United webinars, join our accessible online webinars to improve your business skills for creative people everywhere. Yeah, you still have this challenge of creative people, and I maybe I work with you offline, but uh, it's a difficult. What is a creative person? Um, so it's one to ponder. Okay, let's skip on. I think we're almost spot on with time. So, so, so here we are. So you've got, you've understood the why, the what and the why. You've got a sense of how you do it and create something, um, and then we've got the what next. So it's all well and good having a lovely little. Uh, USP or, or even 15 of them, you're really happy, but what happens thereafter? Now, there may be marketeers in the room, so, and, I, and I indeed am a marketeer, but this is a quote that I totally adore. Marketing is too important to be left to the marketing department to do. This is not because marketeers and people like me are rubbish, it's that actually the impact, I think, from the, when you start being analytical about your marketing proposition and USPs, it actually benefits the entire business or the whole organization. So whether you're a one-man band or whether you've got 500 staff, I would be bold and confident and champion the stuff you've worked on. And I'll come back to that in a second. Okay. What do you do when you've got it? Well, you test, 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 refine, test, refine, reword, and test again. Got that? So here's some tips. You've got your USP. Say it out loud. Move from your piece of paper and start saying the words. And say in the mirror, you'll soon know if it sounds stupid. Um, you'll soon know if you feel if it's genuine, if it really uh, translates. Um, but if your mirror is letting you down, say say in front of other people, then you'll know because they'll give go or oh, or you know they'll nod or they'll be polite um, or ping. You can see that moment and they go, ah, oh, I get it. <laughs> Just say it out loud, say it in front of people. Then ask people to say it. Ask your colleagues to say it. Um, 
And then see if they get it without you having to explain. If you go, oh, right, yes, that, so creative people mean blah, or blah, 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 means this. So forget all of that. Say it to them, ask them to say it, does it feel natural? And then try it on your customers. <laughs> that makes sense, doesn't it? But we often do. I mean, I don't, I don't think you have to, it's a mass appeal, you don't have to get a sample, just, just, just go up and ask some people. And I think the key thing is ask them to play it back to you. So they might be polite. So um, check their understanding. So what, what, does that, what does that mean? If you would put it in your own words, how would you say it? Here we go. Um, integrate it everywhere, right? So a USP is not the same as a brand. A USP comes before branding. And if a branding agent like me, who often does work with clients, comes up and says, oh yeah, we can solve your brand, we can create it for you, and they haven't asked why you're different, what you do is different, distinct to your competitors, or ask about your USPs, then don't go with them. They don't really know what they're talking about. Um, it's not your slogan. So a USP you might create into a slogan, but um, it's not your slogan to start with. So the two areas are marketing and communications. So from a marketing perspective, that's things like, think about how you're promoting the offer. So if one of your things is to be formal um, and distinct and trusted in a, in a regal sense, then maybe Facebook isn't the right channel. Um, conversely, if you really want to be personalized, make sure that all of your packaging of your product, the channels by which it goes through, the communications lines, have that element of personalization. So it doesn't just stay in a, this is how I want my business to be, but the reality of how you do stuff is completely different. You want to start making everything connect. And they do the same in communication. So the messages everywhere need to connect that to your USP. They don't need to quote your USP, but the About Us section um, should explain the story in a, in, as if someone's talking to them using your the threads of your USP. Quickly, here are a couple of things areas you can look at it. Website structure. So sometimes people get so obsessed with the content or the pictures that actually the structure of it can really um, connect with your USP. Your social media persona. Um, so the tone, the start, the feel. Um, again, can connect to your USP. Staff training. When I said earlier that I think it's the foundation of everything, I think it's really key. If you get your USP right, your staff will be more motivated because they'll get it. It will mean something to them. There's a danger that when you train new staff, it takes them six months to learn what it is the organization does. People almost wear it as a badge of honor um, that you still don't know it properly. Actually, we should be making it really simple and, and, and easy to connect with so they don't stumble over their words. And the reports, photography style, space, and that's that purchasing process. So if you sell your product through a different company, a third party, do they fit your USP? If they don't, you're gonna you're gonna lose some of that perspective you got with the customer. Almost there. Right. What do we do next? You test again. My testing moment. Okay. So you've got your USP, you've, you've got it out there, you've, you've integrated your marketing slogan, you've got it, staff chanting it, everybody's loving it, um, and, then, and then what you do, so you do test again. Is the message getting through? Do people explain in their own words your USP? So do you hear people saying, um, Stein, about, your, about your, um, your tableware? Do they, you know, do they say, Oh, you know, it's not, it's not really about the tableware. It's the fact my house looks brilliant when the people come in and talk about it. Um, or or is, it, is it about them improving the food? You know, or I'm really always been rubbish at making a salad, but now I put it on your plate, it looks brilliant. It feels, tastes brilliant. And if, if you find that a customer is starting to use the, the, the USP you wanted to put out there in their own words, um, or Tim talking about the convenience, you know, well, I only really come to the opera because it's just something to do on the weekend. And I can get home fine, not because I necessarily like what they're showing. You know, whatever it be, are people starting to use those words? Um, are new leads being generated? Are these leads converting? So are people that are saying, oh, I'm interested, are they actually buying stuff? Because that really is the point. Um, and the other thing is, is it really credible? So in the process of developing USPs, it's easy to be a bit more ambitious than, uh, than reality. 
So one of the, the big questions to come back to is, is it credible? Does it does this actually make sense? Um, and are we actually living up to this promise? And if you're not, that's fine. To come back to that thing about problems. So if the problem you're solving is too big, so buy a little slice of it. And if that bite is too big, buy a slice smaller until the point where you can be really confident that what you're doing is solving that problem, whole problem, based on that slice. So that hopefully that makes sense. Um, and it's always better to go up and then come back down and end up doing one thing really well um, uh, and credibly than making it too grand and waffly. So, where are we? Final slide. Finally, after all of that, and after you've been absolutely brilliant, the other thing to really remember about USPs is they, they change. Your business will change. The market will change. The problems will change. And USPs don't stay the same. So be mindful of that. It's not about getting your definitive. That's when we talked about vision earlier. It's not about a vision. It's about a response to how you're solving a problem for a customer. Um, so that really, that, well, that, that is it. Um, and I think, if I look at the time, it is 12.58, so we're, we're spot on. I, I can open the chat if people want to ask me questions. I don't know. I don't really know what happens at this point. Is, that, is this going to be a cacophony of sound? Or? Jim, thank you. Thanks, Tim. That's brilliant. Excellent. Well, that's a bit of a, rope, a, bit, a bit of a rattle. Oh, that lovely. They're all saying thank you. This is quite fun. Maybe I'm getting into this. <laughs> Were there any questions? I mean, I think the key thing is you're probably all going off now. Um, if there, if anyone wants to follow up on anything, um, Creative United have a whole series of programs designed to help creatives. You can find me on Twitter at West Creative, or if you tweet. Um, uh, Creative United, we will, you can see what my Twitter is. I'm happy to answer any questions afterwards. But I think that probably is it, 60 minutes. So uh, thank you very much. Have a nice Tuesday afternoon. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>